Welcome to yet another casual clicks in. We're still in round two of the gauntlet featuring the Fantastic Four. We've got yet another Fantastic Four matchup today in Mr. Fantastic's Fantastic Four. This is the team that has Invisible Woman and her stealth busting trait, which is, yeah, my power set is really good for espionage. Stealth, improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain. Adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword with her can use stealth and improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain. So giving her team, anyone that's adjacent to her really is giving her that benefit to not only have stealth, but also have improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain, is really beneficial to someone like Spider-Man. Spider-Man has two targets, five range, which is okay. It's not the greatest, but remember that the shield team ability that Invisible Woman has does give Spider-Man plus one range if they're adjacent. So these two make a pretty formidable combo Considering that when they're adjacent, Spider-Man has stealth, improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain, two targets, six range, incapacitate, and Invisible Woman, of course, you know, because Spider-Man's a wild card too, so he can copy the shield team ability and give her plus one range, meaning that her range increases to seven with three targets. And she also has incapacitate. So these two can really tie a lot of characters down with their range and their incapacitate really allowing Ghost Rider here, who naturally already ignores hindering terrain, thanks to his no hiding from judgment power, to really get to work and uh, do some damage. While Mr. Fantastic plays the role of harasser because of his to stand the griever trait, uh, which we'll look into right now. But, you know, considering there's so much stealth busting in this team, I'm actually curious to see how they're gonna do against Dr. Fantastic's Fantastic Four. Uh, got a Doombot hiding back here because, of course, we're paying 110 points for the Dr. Fantastic. Which gives him the trait, I really should deactivate these Doombots when a friendly character is targeted by an opponent's outwit, perplex, or probability control. After resolutions, you may generate a Doombot. So that's actually another key power that we're going to look into. So let's start with the Stealth Busting first because, like I mentioned, the other team has a lot of Stealth Busting while Dr. Fantastic relies on Stealth. Not necessarily the entire team, because as you can see, we've also got to The Thing and Wolverine, which are very solid bruisers, don't need stealth. They're the ones that are going to go in there and do the bulk of the damage. However, let's not undermine how important Dr. Fantastic is on this team with his double perplex outwit. Uh, well, I'm saying possible double perplex, because he can choose free outwit or perplex, and he can use that power an additional time again. Uh, you know, considering he can already use each power once. This is a great Dr. Fantastic. That we'll see if we can keep him out of range. We'll try to use his 7 range to his advantage. So that way, you know, the stealth busting won't, may not be so bad. Uh, hopefully, you know, try to combat that with some melee characters. Try to get, uh, try to get their attention away from Dr. Fantastic. Let him really do his thing and... Uh, Keep them safe with their trait. Of course, every time they get targeted with Outwit, Probability Control, or Perplex, they generate a Doombot, which is only beneficial to that team. So, you know, just looking at the support powers that they have, Invisible Woman has both Probability Control and Perplex, and of course, Mr. Fantastic has Outwit with his Long Range Planning Special Power with a range of 10, and it has Protected Outwit as well. So we've got, you know, some interesting counterbalances going here and the fact that they have some solid melee characters whereas them they have some defenses against melee characters and these have a lot of stealth busting and they don't really need that much stealth so it's pretty interesting uh to see some of these things that are gonna the way that they're gonna match up and even though like i mentioned that they are melee characters mr fantastic's uh trait to strand a griever opposing characters within four squares and line of fire can't begin moving except during move actions so he's really going to go out on a limb here to try to get them within four squares try to strand them not let them use those charge uh, flurry that they're capable of doing with wolverine's uh, trait 
Uh, there's going to be a lot of back and forth. These are actually my two favorite teams from the ones that I've made so far. We'll see how they go up against each other and we'll analyze it afterwards. So enough talking, let's get this one started. So like I've been saying as part of the process here for the gauntlet, I am still assigning I am still assigning random starting areas and I have not rolled for initiative. I have four characters apiece that get the exact same bonus. So that means that the stealth team gets the initiative. I'm sorry, not the stealth team, the stealth busting team. That's with Invisible Woman, Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, and Mr. Fantastic. I like how these teams ended up being teams of four. Very fitting. These two Fantastic Four teams... Like I said before we started, are probably my favorite ones. Doesn't mean that I want to play them biasedly. I want to stay as unbiased as possible. Try to make the best moves possible with the roles I'm given because of the solo rules. That's kind of, I think, what helps a little bit with playing teams uh, a little biasly is that sometimes even if you try to play that team the best that you can the deployment role may end up uh, changing those plans and so we got initiative on that team now let's roll for deployment orders that's a five and a three frontline firepower But uh, guess what? They're all 75 points, so the joke's on you rules. Let's see if that gives them an advantage, actually. Seeing as how they can take their turn in the order that they wish. By the way, if you're still sticking around and actually listening to this, thanks for hanging in there. But as you can see, I'm slowly making everything a little better. I know I could have probably waited until I got this set up to look. I mean, I'm not going to say this looks nice, but it looks better. That's playing time. That's that, that cuts into my playing time because then it throws me out of my little play testing loops that I go through. And I wanted to start testing all these combinations so I could of course create more content for you all and the clicks tactics uh, team building stuff and so you know instead of waiting and waiting until I get all the equipment that I need to make this look the way I want it by the way this is still not the final stage um, it's gonna be a while but I want to record content too so thanks for hanging in there with me and let's get this game started. Enough chatter. Both Ghost Rider and Invisible Woman can carry. I think Invisible Woman, as mentioned previously, works better with Spider-Man. So let's get those two moving together. Minus one speed for carrying. 8 speed. Oh, and in case you can't tell, this is Reed's Lab Indoor from the Cosmic Clash starter set, Fantastic Four. See the little theme going here? Anyways, uh, Invisible Woman is going to move 8 squares. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, eight, seven, 
8. Now I'm going to position him this way and this is my reasoning why. And let's maybe you have a different opinion and share that with me please. Um, if the enemies, like let's say the opposing characters were to move Either way they move, I have more visible lines of fire than if I were to do something like this. Like, let's say, let's put them there. And if I were to do something like this, I'm limiting Spider Man's line of fire, in this case, Invisible Woman. So you always want to find a good angle. See that? So from here, Spider-Man blocks the line of fire to Invisible Woman. And it's not a difficult angle to get to, really. So that's my reasoning. Just try to get better angles. Not saying that that's the best angle. But that's what it looks like to me. Let's get Ghost Rider carrying Mr. Fantastic. Speed of 8 minus 1 is 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's use their stealth to our advantage here. The fact that Invisible Woman will grant Spider-Man stealth because of her trait will also grant Mr. Fantastic stealth. It doesn't matter. He's not hindering terrain. Um... But Invisible Woman and Spider-Man are, which is great because that's as far as you could move. So he's still able to benefit somewhat from that power. That was the first turn. For the first Fantastic Four team, here comes the second team. Unrestricted operations. Okay. Wait, did I forget to use any purple X or something with this team? No, they've got probability control. And outwit. Oh, they're behind blocking here, so I wouldn't have been able to see them anyway. We are going to generate that Alicia Grimm bystander. Uh, one of the more glaring weaknesses on close combat oriented teams like this team is that you have the problem of being able to, you know, can you close the gap? Can you make up for the lack of range that you have in order to be able to make your first attack. So having range in this game is very beneficial because <clears throat> it allows you, of course, to get the first attack. And of course, as you know, most hero click styles, as the more damage you take, the lower your values get barring special occasions like Hulk and other such nonsense monsters, of course. In which case you would, of course, then you just need to re-strategize. But that's not the point. The point is, Dr. Fantastic here, although not a silver bullet, will deter uh Hopefully opposing figures from using Outwit on their team so that way they can they're able to use their powers to close that gap Which is the charge The movement powers uh, Of course the defensive powers sometimes work too if you're gonna deal an insane amount of damage Not insane, but you know a good chunk anyways They have stealth 
and we don't bust stuff. There's no stuff busting here. They got to do it with their fists. Maybe get a lucky energy explosion with Human Torch. But if the Thing and Wolverine can make contact, we may have ourselves a game here. So right now, my goal is to try to close that gap because I have no other way of hitting them with this team with their range, so they have to get really close quickly before they just get incapacitated to death and then Ghost Rider goes to town with his penetrating psychic blast. And while this schmuck over here can really screw things up with his distranded griever. So we gotta get close. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> Gap closed. Here's the thing. Eh? Eh? Nah, you didn't get it. Um. Human Torch, my plan was to initially use Dr. Fantastic, uh, I'm sorry, Human Torch to carry Dr. Fantastic and Wolverine to carry the thing. However, Wolverine won't be able to make the leap or the run, whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six. He would have to stop there. One shy. So I think we're going to have to uh, switch up our plan here and use the thing as our bodyguard to tie up Spider-Man and Invisible Woman. Keep the heat off Wolverine. Let Wolverine bring Dr. Fantastic in. Alicia Grimm will follow. And uh, if Dr. Fantastic can help out with that perplex, hey, even better. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the decision comes, do I place him here or here? But why would that matter? Placement is very important in this game. And uh, let's say one, two, three, four. It forces Ghost Rider to get closer into the action to be able to attack Human Torch. Otherwise, he's just limited to attacking the thing. Which, hey, do we want Ghost Rider attacking our thing? Well, let's see. <laughs> attacking our thing. Uh, he's got Invincible. And Ghost Rider has Penetrating Psychic Blast, which is going to do Squat to Invincible. So, I don't mind. Uh, but, let's consider this now. If I want to attack the thing with Ghost Rider, I can actually go further back because now he's out of, he's in the line of fire. He's in danger now. As opposed to if I were to place him over here, uh, then he would have to go one, two, again, closer to the action. So what I'm trying to say is that who do we value more right now? I think right now we value the thing more because we need him to keep those figures tied up. That means that Human Torch here is expandable. Uh, be, he's has range. And against the stealth team, is not going to do much unless, like I said, barring a lucky energy explosion. So let's let's protect our thing. Keep him away from Ghost Rider. Use Human Torch to draw some fire. Eh? Eh? Eh, you don't.
don't get that one either. Uh, he'll draw some fire away from the thing. Hey, look at that. Fire guys. Fire guys. Ah. Anyways, let's give him a token. <clears throat> now let's consider moving Wolverine. Wolverine has this cool trait where, uh, but uh, once per turn, when Wolverine is carried and placed adjacent to two or more opposing characters, after resolutions he may make a close attack, which then triggers his trait. When Wolverine hits with a close attack, until your next turn, other friendly characters with a Fantastic Four keyword can use Flurry. If we were to take this approach, this kind of uh, terrible Alpha Strike approach, yes. Wolverine gets his free close attack. Yes, your Fantastic Four can use Flurry, but who else is going to be able to use it besides Wolverine? No one. Right, so as fun as it would be to, you know, make that attack on the first turn, on your first turn anyway, uh, you gotta you gotta weigh the consequences here, you know. Because then what happens too is that neither the thing or Dr. Fantastic can carry each other and they're both going to have to hoof it over there. You're just not using your actions wisely that way. <clears throat> so instead, we'll just perplex Wolverine's speed up. Uh, let's see. So he can move six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I give him plus two speed. Is that something we want to do? You know, that'll put Dr. Fantastic here. And that means that he's going to have to be our expendable piece. Do we want to use 110 characters as an expendable piece? Maybe. He has a decent defense, 19 defense. So he may be able to, you know, survive some attacks. Um... If you target him without wit, we got a free Doom Bot, right? When a friendly character is targeted by an opponent's outwit, perplex probability control after resolutions, you may generate a Doom Bot. I'm like, okay, they'll outwit the power, but then I generate that Doom Bot. I could use that Doom Bot to block Line of Fire. And so I think Dr. Fantastic is uh, going to serve the role of tie up here. Here on ca casual clicks in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, what's the difference if I were to put him here or here? Well, here, Ghost Rider can hang further back and attack him. Then if I were to put him here, which would still force Ghost Rider to move closer. And I don't really see any benefits to Dr. Fantastic as he can't draw a line of fire to Spider-Man because he's in hindering terrain, giving him, which gives him stealth. So, you know, what, a close attack with Dr. Fantastic? That's fine. Mr. Fantastic here has Quake. And no movement powers besides plasticity. Range of three. Okay, he's got a range of three, but <clears throat> he needs to be able to draw a line of fire. So I think let's put him there. This does mean that Wolverine is not adjacent to Spider-Man, but uh, well, you know what? I just remembered Wolverine has sidestep. We don't even need to use the perplex on that. So yeah, let's. Uh, he can make it over here is what I'm trying to say without me having to use a perplex and that's actually the I guess the better place or here 
That way, Dr. Fantastic isn't hindering terrain, which I guess on this team it doesn't really matter, but you never know. You may be able to knock out Invisible Woman. That way, Spider-Man loses his ability to see through hindering terrain, as does Mr. Fantastic. And, but that does make Dr. Fantastic susceptible to more attacks, which may be fine, because like I said, in the end, I think... I want him to get attacked rather than Wolverine so Wolverine can get through and deal some real damage. <clears throat> and he's going to use his Perplex power since these two characters have stealth. He can't draw a line of fire to them. However, uh, he still has that Free, choose Outwit or Perplex. Dr. Fantastic can use Chosen Power an additional time this turn. So he's going to Perplex his own defense and... Um, hmm. I can't see Wolverine from there. One, two, three, four. Oh, no. We're going to have to place him over here. Like I said, we got to keep Wolverine here. As fun as it would be to see Dr. Fantastic duke it out against Invisible Woman. Uh, he'll have to fight Spider-Man, I guess. Let's roll initiative for the other team. Oh, wait, we got Alicia Grimm over here. Poor Alicia. Let's throw her in there. Why not? She's got support if we need it. She's giving the thing plus one speed attack and damage. As she is within four squares of an opposing character. And Dr. Fantastic is going to perplex his own defense and the thing's defense. So 19 and 20. Here we go for the other team. Three and a one, conservative tactics. Okay, so that means that only Mr. Fantastic and Spider-Man can take actions. See what I mean about these solar rules just kind of throwing a wrench in our plan sometimes. But that's okay. It's all part of the plan. Spider-Man here. He's going to make a close attack. So here's the part that makes Dr. Fantastic just something else. Because uh, let's say I were to want to attack the thing here. Okay, I have to deal with his invincible as it is. Spider-Man does three damage. One will get through. Uh, for 11 attack to a 19 defense. I need an 8. I've got probability control on my side. So that may help. What I'm trying to get at is that it would be much more helpful if I were to be able to use my outwit on the thing to remove his invincible to deal three damage to make that attack worth generating that doom bot. You know, because I guess I can deal with a doom bot, but trying to hit that eight, that's what has me a little worried. And he is one of those characters that I would like to knock out as soon as possible because he's getting plus one speed attack and damage because of Alicia Grimm. That's just ridiculous. He, if I take her out, he'll get that for the rest of the game. And he heals to his starting click. So I think, <laughs> wow. You know, I, it feels like we need to attack Dr. Fantastic first because he's the one that's causing these problems too. Because if I start, you know, outwitting the thing, bashing him slowly, getting rid of him, I'll generate maybe two Doombots doing so. 
And then I still have to get through Dr. Fantastic. If I want to outwit him or perplex him or use probability control against him, generate more doom bots. So I think as dangerous as the thing is, I think I have to go after Dr. Fantastic. We may be able to deal with just the amount of damage that they can do. Uh, if I'm going to have to sacrifice Mr. Fantastic to see if I can tie up Wolverine and keep him tied up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you know what? I could just dump him in there. Yes, that's what I'll do. Okay. Um, he can't carry anyone, so he'll move in there. <clears throat> Since he didn't have line of fire to anyone back there anyway, Oh, uh, you know what? Before I make that move, I almost missed his trait. Friendly characters with a Fantastic Four keyword within four squares can use leadership. Mr. Fantastic is going to roll for leadership. And Spider Man. It's going to roll for leadership. By the way, these special rules were ignored. Again, still not in the portion where they get to select their maps. Placing Mr. Fantastic there so he blocks line of fire from the thing. Being able to use probability control on Invisible Woman. <clears throat> Plus, you know, it ties up these two characters to let Spider-Man and Invisible Woman and Ghost Rider slowly chip away. So like I mentioned, I think the high priority target right now would be Dr. Fantastic. And not being able to deal with him without being able to outwit him because don't want to generate those doom bots just yet. So we're just going to try to hit him the old fashioned way with his fists. He's got an 11 attack. Running shot, which, you know, he ignores characters, so he can actually technically just break away if he wants to, but he's fine in stealth. I move him further back, then he can't see through hindering terrain, which once Dr. Fantastic join, gets into hindering terrain may become a problem. So outside of using his double, you know, his two target incapacitate, I think it's just better to try to get rid of Dr. Fantastic right now by dealing damage and slowly whittling away. Well, we still have our probability control too. Because I can target my own characters, I just can't target them. <clears throat> That's a miss. That's definitely a prob right there. By Invisible Woman. And that's still a miss.
Invisible Woman is going to incapacitate the thing because she only does two damage, or do we want to hit him for two? And generate a Doombot. Uh, no, that's okay. Let's just incapacitate him. 11, 19, yeah, that hits. Oh, wait, no. That's their token. Couldn't move Ghost Rider as per the deployment orders. A very lackluster turn for this team. I'm definitely seeing some cracks in this team already starting to form. Double two. Oh no, that may actually help the other team. We're just gonna grab Hulk here. Put him in there, start in the opponent's starting area. This also means that uh, they got aggressive tactics. Only characters with action tokens can take actions, which Invisible Woman is regretting that in capacity. Because now that means a thing can attack. And guess what? He's got uh, plus one attack and damage. Because Alicia Grimm is within four squares of an opposing character. Twelve attack, four damage. Let's give him flurry, shall we? Wolverine also has an action token. And if I hit with a close attack until your next turn, other friendly characters with a fantastic four keyword can use flurry. <clears throat> Wolverine himself has charge flurry sidestep. Uh, but you know, since Mr. Fantastic has so willingly offered himself up to be sliced and diced, uh, should I still try to step away with sidestep? One, two. That'll leave him open to attack from Ghost Rider. Same here. Uh, so, yeah, let's keep him in there. Let's. Uh, this may also be our best shot at Mr. Fantastic. Well, well, yeah, because he's got Flurry, so I got two chances here, as opposed to the Thing, who has a slightly higher attack, but only gets one shot. So Wolverine has 11 attack. Flurry, Blades, sure. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, that's a hit. Mr. Fantastic does not have shape change, believe it or not. He only has combat reflexes. And let's roll for blades. Oh, that's going to hurt. Puts him on his last click. Here comes the second attack. That's a hit too. Still doesn't have shape change, super senses, anything to kind of protect him. I was hoping he would survive a little bit longer. 
I guess luckily for them, the Hulk is here to reinforce. <clears throat> and now the thing has flurry. So let's flurry invisible woman. 18 defense, 12 attack. Oh, <laughs> oh wow, that's a critical hit. So if Invisible Woman chooses not, chooses to theme team, P I'm sorry, not theme team, chooses to use her regular probability control on that because they'll become the target of probability control, it will generate a Doom Bot. So now it's like, does she take five damage? <laughs> Wow, and gets knocked back. I mean, if I don't use her PC, she'll take four damage, but won't get knocked back. Is that better? So, you know, I had been holding off on wanting to use her trait to form the new Fantastic Four trait because I couldn't see I couldn't see the weaknesses I guess in the team after this match though I don't I don't know if Mr. Fantastic is enough to slow the melee hordes or if maybe I just need to play more defensively or have a more melee oriented team on the sideline to swap out for this team. Part of the gauntlet process, people. Part of the gauntlet process. Now the decision comes, do I want to use that probability control? I don't think so. For, I mean, it's he only needs a six. And if I were to use it, uh, they get a doom bot. And let's say, okay, well, he misses, right? They can still use a theme team prob here with Dr. Fantastic since he can't do anything else. So either way, on her fourth, on her fifth or sixth click, because that's where she'll end up with taking four damage, she loses perplex on either one. She just has one less defense. So yeah, she's going to take that. Hey, so here's that moment I was talking about with Human Torch. If he gets lucky, he'll be able to use an energy explosion. Uh, Never mind. Ghost Rider has invulnerability. And I mean, what? Invisible Woman will take one damage. I may as well just attack her. He does three damage. I think I am, just to get rid of her. I think I am. Uh, seeing as how he can copy the Minions of Doom team ability from Dr. Fantastic. He would use Running Shot. KO Invisible Woman. He gets a token. He takes a pushing damage. When this character KOs a standard opposing character after resolutions, he'll one click on a friendly character using this team ability. Uh, she has stealth though, so we would need to move over here. 
Which I guess is fine because I mean he's he did what he sought out to do, which is to get the thing into close combat. So let's just let's do it. Let's play a little risky here. Why not? There. Uh, I want to put some more pressure on them, seeing as how they spawned a re reinforcement for the other team. So let's try to be a little aggressive here. Oh wow, that's terrible. Hey, well, he's got sidestep at least, so he can walk back. <clears throat> okay. Dr. Fantastic will continue to perplex his defense and the things. Here we go for the other team. Unrestricted operations. Let's use Ghost Riders, no hiding from judgment. Now we won't be able to deal penetrating damage because he has Invincible. That's okay. He still gets plus one attack and damage because the thing is in hindering terrain. One, two, 12 attack, four damage on the things. 19 defense. That's a hit. Gotta watch out now. He's sitting on impervious. That means that Ghost Rider could push next turn. He just cut through that with his penetrating psychic blast. <coughs> Spider-Man here. It's going to attack Dr. Fantastic. Why not? Uh, well, you know what? He does. He will push. So. Let's reconsider. Let's get Hulk in on the action. There's the reinforcement. About time, they say. And you know, Spider-Man needs a nine. He lost his stealth. I missed that part, how useful Invisible Woman is adjacent to Spider-Man. I should have maybe then reconsidered. Use her probability control to generate that Doombot. Uh, but you know, just to try to not get knocked back is really what I was trying to do. But now he's susceptible to Dr. Fantastic's outwit. Can outwit his super senses. Do some decent amount of damage. With his perplex. Here we go. Frontline firepower. Uh, well, I mean, really, we only have Dr. Fantastic, right? Everyone else has two tokens. Besides Alicia Grimm. Which, hey, by the way, sidestep. Uh, no, sidestep. I can actually move her, but I got to use Dr. Fantastic first, so. 10 attack, 18 defense. Outweigh the super senses. Let's 
perplex his attack up twice let's let's play it safe here oh wow and he still missed <laughs> there's no way to team team prop that that's okay that's okay that's not okay what are you doing man you wasting your perplexes like that and your outwit and move her to tie up let's go with the other team now Three and a two, conservative tactics. Hulk is nullified. Ghost Rider is nullified. That's up to Invisible Woman and Spider Man. Invisible Woman is going to carry the thing. I'm sorry, the Hulk. Get him in close. Nice and snug. Spider-Man is going to attack Dr. Fantastic yet again, yet again. Here we go. I need an eight. That's a miss. Not able to use these two. Restricted operations for Dr. Fantastic and crew. Now that they're they have stealth again, let's knock out Invisible Woman, I guess. How are we gonna do this, folks? Wolverine's got sidestep. He can somehow make it around. Let's try to make that happen. Breakaway sidestep with Wolverine. That's a miss. Uh, Human Torch is going to try to break away sidestep. That's a fail. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's just start wailing on Hulk, I guess. Wolverine is going to use uh, let's see. He has two base damage. Even with the things in power, how much of a boost does he get when the things start? No, not that one. Friendly characters with a Fantastic Four keyword within four squares can use in power. So that means that him and Human Torch can give... Oh, wait. And Dr. Fantastic. So Wolverine's actually uh, at, plus, at not plus three damage. So a total of five flurry on in the Hulks. Invulnerability. That's... Uh, that's Them's good odds, I say. Uh, so what is that? 11 attack. That's a miss. Maybe I should have used Dr. Fantastic's infamous perplex back there. You live, you learn. Definitely gonna theme team prop that. That's the third six in a row. Found a one theme team probability control token. Wow, that's another miss. Well, it looks like we'll have to do things the old-fashioned way then. Uh, the thing has 
11 attack, 4 damage. Dr. Fantastic will perplex the thing's damage up by 2. Let's just put all our eggs in one basket right now. Why not? Oh, but you know what? They've got probs too. Well, we got to make up for the damage somehow. So here we go. Hey, that's a hit. Uh, yeah, let's start using some of their probs now. Now they're down to two. Hulk is going to get a token. Let's make them reroll that. Uh, that's another hit. Now it's down to Spider-Man. If he's going to use a theme team prob here. Uh, sure. We want Hulk to deal some damage here. Down a one. That's a miss. Dr. Fantastic can't use his outwit. That was a terrible misplay on my part. That's their deployment roll. They got a five frontline firepower, which again does not matter. They're all 75 points. Let's do this. Hulk on Wolverine action right here on casual clicks and Hulk's got an 11 attack. No way to buff it. Well, you know what? Actually, I just realized Friendly characters with a Fantastic Four keyword within four squares can use Empower. So the thing already actually had plus three damage. Got to put that into attack. He still would have missed because he rolled a four in the end. Uh, even if I had perplexed his attack to 13, he would have needed a five. Okay, so results the same. So Hulk, 11 attack. Wolverine has 18 defense. Here we go. That's a hit. He only needs a 7. They're going to use their last team team prob here. Let's try to save Wolverine, shall we? Come on, people. That's a miss. And let's use up their theme team probs too. I just want to get them out of the way. Less things to remember, right? Nah, we got to get this hit too anyway. We're trying to get at Wolverine. Stop him from using Flurry on us. 11, 17, 18 defense, that's not enough. Like I said, no real way to perplex. No actual way to perplex. And now Ghost Rider is going to try to break away running shot. Fails. I just don't want to KO Alicia Grimm and heal the thing all the way back up, you know. Seems absurd. Back to the other team. Aggressive Tactics. Wolverine. Let's do this again, Wolverine. Let's do this correctly, Wolverine. Let's replace your attack up. Uh, 
let's do by one and he'll perplex his own defense up by one uh, the thing's defense by one Yeah, Wolverine's defense by one. So uh, plus one attack and defense to Wolverine. He's going to use Flurry. It's 12 attack, 18. That's a hit. Uh, two, three, four, five, minus two. That's three damage. Uh, I think it's all over for this team, sadly. Definitely should have played them. What is that? Five damage, so he takes four. Oh, that knocks him out. Yeah, you know, now... Um, I think I was too aggressive with this team. Um, a little careless with their positioning. I could have maybe placed them somewhere over here or further back in this room. Dr. Fantastic against Spider-Man. I guess Wolverine won that battle against the Hulk, huh? He is a super rare, I guess. Uh, hey, that's a hit. Now he gets super senses, or spider senses. That's a hit. Human Torch. Uh, let's roll for deployment. Four and a three. Con uh, that's frontline finesse. Doesn't matter. Spider Man's got close combat expert. Let's pump it into attack and damage. 11 attack, three damage. Targeting Dr. Fantastic. Oh wait, Dr. Fantastic had Flurry. Let's make that second attack. Ah, that's a miss. Okay, Spider-Man on Dr. Fantastic. Oh. That's a hit. Oh, uh, for some reason I thought Dr. Fantastic had Cuffness. He has Invincible. I would have thrown it on to attack them. Either way, he hit. Now that Spider-Man has hit, other friendly characters with a Fantastic Four keyword can use improved movement. Characters elevated terrain and hindering terrain, which is perfect because I need Ghost Rider to get moving. Um, <clears throat> so he's going to, I'm going to push him to do running shot since he has penetrating psychic blast and Dr. Fantastic has impervious. Let's see if this works. Um, uh, betting it all here. If he doesn't hit, it's all downhill for this team. Oh, and he missed. That's a crucial miss. Not only does it take pushing damage. But now he's out in the open for Dr. Fantastic to outwit and slowly whittle away. Unrestricted operations. Okay, here we go. Human Torch. It's gonna sidestep. Uh, carrying Wolverine. One. Two.
So let's make that close attack with Wolverine. Uh, so Wolverine has an 11 attack. I'll have him target Invisible Woman. That's a hit. And he'll just deal regular damage to make sure that he gets rid of her, which is he'll get an Empower boost. He already does two damage. So it'll be three. I just wanted to trigger Flurry on the thing here. And Dr. Fantastic will perplex his attack up twice. He has our, he already has four damage. So he's looking to do a lot of damage here. That's a miss. And that's a hit. Oh, well, you know what? They should have healed one. Uh, he's got super senses. That's a miss. Oh, that still knocks him out. Let's analyze this game. So that was the not so exciting conclusion of the Fantastic Four matchup featuring Dr. Fantastic and the stealth busting Fantastic Four starring Invisible Woman and Spider-Man. So just kind of breaking this team down, of course, you know, one of the uh, bigger mistakes I made during the game was the placement. I was a little too aggressive with the stealth busting team, you know, trying to get Mr. Fantastic within four square. So that way he, you know, they'd be close enough to trigger the to strand the griever trait that he has. Not, re not remembering or not realizing that they had enough speed to close the gap very quickly, put the thing right up to Invisible Woman and Spider-Man, and, you know, just threw a wrench in our plan uh, with one of the teams, and that happens. That's how we get better at this game. We have to learn from our mistakes, of course. This being a more range-heavy team, Invisible Woman, Spider-Man, and company, I should have been a little more careful with them uh, regarding their placement. Hang back a little bit like I mentioned in the playthrough. Maybe put them in a different room. To cut off, you know, the attack angles that the opposing team could get. And all in all, you know, I'm still, of course, still very impressed by the other team. Dr. Fantastic and company. Wolverine, the thing... Proving to be a great one-two punch right here. If you can get the Wolverine's flurry, even better. Uh, the things in power, I mean, we saw it in action there. Giving, you know, them giving themselves boosts, plus three damage boosts throughout was some was a, quite a sight to behold. Human Torch didn't get to contribute much, but that's okay. He's not really there to do much. I mean, I, like I mentioned, I think I'm pretty sure I've talked about this, that... If he gets off an attack and is able to deal some damage, well, cool, you know, I am, I'm happy with that. Mostly I have him here because he's 40 points and he carry, he can carry someone. He flies, of course, and he has a stop click and he was slowly chipping away, pushing, taking those probability control tokens for the team. And I'm, I'm okay with that because even if he got down to his third click, they'd still have to hit him. Hit him into his stop click. He's still got, you know, some fight left in him with running shot, penetrating psychic blast. Um, this team is probably the team right now. I still honestly can't see something like that I would probably use to improve. Some more playthroughs are definitely required with this team, however, just to make sure that, you know, it is going to stand at those four. On this other one, I'm considering removing Mr. Fantastic from this team. And I don't know, maybe Ghost Rider seems like a bit overkill, but I kind of like him in this team. And, you know, if I remove Mr. Fantastic, this team loses its leadership all throughout because he does let anyone use leadership within four squares. And 
maybe I'll just leave them like this, just build a sideline for them. Uh, so that way, in case I want to activate Invisible Woman's form a new Fantastic Four and just bring in a more close combat oriented team to kind of offset the fact that they do have that weakness against close combat teams. Still more playtesting to go. So like that's, you know, the round two of the gauntlet, it says to play each team at least twice. Uh, I'm probably going to go for three and maybe even four times. Uh, Fantastic Four, right? Uh, no, but seriously, just to make sure that, you know, that uh, the first gauntlet that we put out is uh, definitely trying my best here to put out a awesome Fantastic Four team. And remember... We also have the Future Foundation coming out soon, which will, of course, impact a lot of the stuff that I've done in the gauntlet. And that's a whole other thing that we need to take into account once that set comes out. Uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you're notified when the next episode of the gauntlet goes live. As always, thank you so much for watching. 